so that's that's the address where you can get gamma ray. Um, we we tagged the 1.0.0 version uh, yesterday, I think, just for the dev days. Um, so gamma ray is an introspection tool, and it you can use it for QML, but you can also use it for traditional Qt application. And you 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 can see the different widgets. You can see signal slots. Uh, connection, etc., etc., etc. It's really nice, and uh, I really invite you to go to our booth and have a look because there are some nice things coming in the next version of Gamma Ray, like 3D vi visualization and things like this. And uh, we are, we also have a, a special version of Cute Creator named Kedab Creator. Uh, with uh, gamma ray integration into it. So it's also on Git GitHub, github.com slash kedab slash gamma ray and uh, kedab slash kedab creator. Um. So, we are done for module five, and, and it's time for, you know. So, um, skipping module seven, module seven uh, is all about um, Qt Creator, explaining Qt Creator, and we've been doing that so far. So I'll move yeah. into it. It's mute. Sorry. Words. Um, Once again. So we'll move into module eight, which could be the first one, but it's the last one, or almost the last one. Um, and maybe the designers won't be as scared now, because the idea, let's first get them scared, and now that they can see it's not that hard. So, Model 8, really simple. How to export something from Photoshop into Qt Design and make it work. Um, uh, so yeah, that's uh, the objectives. Um, so first, let's see the application uh, we want to port. This is, uh, was made from Brazilian people, so it's about a uh, soap opera named uh, Passione. Passion. Um, and apparently it's, uh, yeah, it's tacky. <laughs> but it's a soap opera, come on. Um, uh, so the, the idea here is that we have something that we've done in Photoshop. So the designer will have this thing prepared in Photoshop and then he exports it to QML. So there's a um, few scripts uh, from, from Nokia that, that do that. You have a one file, you execute the script. Oh, the script, by the way, it's not like something you need to do in a command line. You'll have, it'll show up an option on Photoshop uh, or GIMP, and I think it works for Illustrator as well, uh, where you say export this design into uh, QML. So that's easy, right? Um, just a few things about the, the, the file preparation. Um, of course, you should minimize the number of layers since each layer will be exported as an element. Um, and this is something interesting, and I think it was one of the, thing, the things that helped me a lot while learning QML was that the basic logic of a drawing and the basic logic of QML are still basically the same. So the, there's mostly a tree of elements that sometimes are nested, sometimes are individual, sometimes are in the root le level, but it's pretty much the same thing. And uh, by, if you hide layers, they will not be exported. You should name them with uh, decent names, because those are the names that will show up in the QML file. And, uh, well, 
and ensure that you have at least one fully filled layer um, uh, for the background. So, uh, and here's a little view, and I'm going directly now here. And what I'm going to try to do in this module is I'm going to try to do that application, and it includes uh, quite a few things happening without touching the code uh, or touching the code as little as possible. See. Uh, see it from a designer point of view, see if you guys can understand and see it, if it's so different from, so, from Photoshop or any other tool. So now let me open Qt Creator. It can, it can be also interesting for you if you are working with designer who don't know Qt Quick yet, and who are still working with uh, Photoshop, for example. Let's see, so for example, they have some P the PSD files here, you can play with them and do the exporting. I don't have Illustrator, uh, Photoshop installed here, so I'm not doing the, the export. But export is really just that, it's just pressing one button saying export, and something like this will pop out in your in your in your directory structure. So I wanted to see this was done by by a designer. Do you want to know why? Do you know to know why this was done by a designer and not a developer. There's no project file here. <laughs> Let me see if I have some. No. Just create one. I don't know how to create project files. But I can open another module and navigate there. Okay. Let me just navigate back into module eight. So example, export. And this is the result you get instantly. So this is, you add something there in the, your um, Photoshop. It looked like this when you export it. It still looks exactly like the thing you've exported. And now let's live this, let this be, don't look at the code, and see the thing. And try to do the, the, the steps that they uh, tell us to do. So here we have, so this is much more like the thing that you should be looking at in Photoshop. So apparently they add all of these shapes. They have done something here, which is a button apparently because you know there's another one underneath it but we'll look at about that later just undo and all of our things layered properly and it already looks like something so for what a uh, mockup is okay that mockup done in now in QML Great. So now let's add a little bit more features to it. So uh, before we go into that, let's let you just show you. You can see here. I've been showing you this so far, but you can see that we have our background, a group, which is this thing here, a header, which is the name. Don't like the text. Um, this item here, a background, a close button, a menu button, all of those things. And those were named in the, in the Photoshop, not here. Only, only thing that you should be aware when doing these exports is that filters won't 
go out. So if you have the filters on Photoshop, like multiply filter, uh, those type of filters, they won't show up here because Kiyomo doesn't support them. Please uh, render the filters into, uh, into a PNG or a static PNG in Photoshop so it gets exported correctly. But that's the only thing that you should take care of. The rest is pretty straightforward. So example, here it is. Do not caution with the blending modes because the blending, which is a type of filter which you developers know all about, um, uh, will lead you into problems because QML doesn't do those little filters. Okay, so now let's start building our mockup and prototype. So, flickable. Let's make that thing in the middle flickable, okay? I'm not even going to read the text. I'm just going to try to make this flickable without doing anything. So the first thing I want to do is to group this header here with the group. So I'm going to move it here, see? Now it's inside the group. Okay, done. Now I need a flickable thing, right? Where is flickable? At the beginning. That's flippable, flickable, okay. Let's put the flickable element here. And it ended up here, and I don't want it here. I want it uh, where? Maybe here, next to group. And now flippable, flickable, I want the size, the layout, take over its parent, so it's the entire size, right? Um, and I want the, fi the flickable thing to be the group, right? That's what I want to do. Let me put it inside. Let's see if it works. No. Right. Why? Let's see what's wrong. Content. There's no content. There's content. Content height. Obviously, he's right. And I should have look, looked at it here. The, there's no content height. And I think I can set it up here. So I can set the content height to be, I could set it to be the the thing there, but for this case, I'm trying to do without touching the, ah, because I spread the W, the width. Again, so 800 and zero here. Let's see it again. Okay, it works a little bit too well, so auto flip direction, just vertical flip, okay? Again, see, try an error, error. works really well. So we had kind of a static, static mop and now it's already flickable, okay? Um, and with, without touching any code. I haven't touched code, right? My. So now they want me to do a new group. And a new group, oh, it's just a, a copy of the first one. Let's go into there. So they want group. I'll copy. So now there's group one. Where is group one? I'm going to place it here. I'm going to do an anchoring. I'm going to anchor it to the top one. Parent. Hmm. 
Oh, I don't think, okay. Oh, group, okay. And the margin to be a little bit more. Okay, that's all they wanted. Let's see if it works. It works. <coughs> Maybe now a little bit of code. No. The, the, the thing that I could now do is bind the property of the of the i to the group, to the to the to the, to the two groups, right? Or I could group them inside one element, one item, create a new item, and place those two things inside it, and then group the the um, flickable this in flickable this property the. Um, content size, which now is a static value. It would be better if it's not uh, a static value, but it, it depends on the size of the actual element. But for this case, and because I'm a stubborn designer that doesn't want to do code, I'm just going to add, uh, code it like this. I can go a bit more up or down. Okay. So, oh, column. They didn't want that. They wanted to create a column. Okay, so I didn't read what they wanted to. That's very typical of me. So they wanted <laughs> those two guys to be inside a column. Where is column? Here it is. So as you can see, you can re reorganize the tree, uh, the tree of uh, items directly inside the designer, which is really nice. And now group one that I have that I have done some specific layering, I can remove it. And you get that some spacing. Yeah, now I need to delete the spacing <coughs> values that I have here. This to zero. And now in column where it should be filling the parent value. I would guess that it has spacing, and they wanted how much? They wanted add a field to parent anchor, adjust it to its top margin to 20, then add as 20 space, uh, 40 between elements. This is what they want me to do, so see? And they wanted to have, a, in the anchoring of column, they wanted to have a top spacing of 20. On the top, type 20. OK. Maybe that's too little, because it, but OK, let's, let's try. Great, right? So I don't like it exactly how it looks. Let me make it a bit more. They don't know what they're doing. Need to fix it for them. 60 now. <coughs> hmm, still not exactly where I wanted to. There's no target. Aha. Thank you. So now, a bit better. Not covered. So, next step create two new states to toggle through the buttons, create three mouse areas, one for each of the footer, the footer options, use snapping, I don't care about that. States, okay. So, let's see what they want. They basically want to create three states to show the 
these buttons here. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Okay, so starting with the very, very beginning. Two states. How do they want me to name them? Capitulus. And personages. Do not remove the mouse or it won't work. Okay, so now we have three states. So in the base state, let's say that it's this menu. Um, I would guess that they will need, this is me thinking a bit further and using a little, little evil trick here. I would guess me, I would guess that they want me to click that. And so I would probably use a mouse area attached to this guy. So, and the thing about mouse areas, you cannot click on something that has an opacity value of zero. So I'm going to use a little evil trick. And I'm setting the opacity here to 0 .0, oh, 0 0.1, which by, by all effects is zero because there's only 255 states of opacity. So anything below 0 0.5 is Zero point oh zero point one is not enough. Zero point zero one. <coughs> this is integral values. So zero point zero one is invisible because it's smaller than two hundred fifty five one under two hundred and fifty five. Is it? I don't know. Yes. No, it's not. Yes. It is okay. Bye. Anyway, you can see the effect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, now let's make state two. The state two, what changes? This guy now becomes point zero two one, and this guy now becomes visible one, and this is like this. In the last state, this guy is zero point one. And this guy no, 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 this doesn't one. change. Thank you. And then this guy becomes one. OK, great. So what else do they want me to do? Toggle between the images. So basically want me to click the things. And when I click them, the state changes. OK. So um, w one thing about the initial state here. Uh, I don't know if you, you if you pay attention, but when Nuno changed the opacity of uh, the button in the initial state, it changes in all the different states. Why? Because until there's a specific change in a state, the the property will will be the same as the as the initial state. Uh, can you take another example? Uh, for example, you, you you have to go to the initial state. Yes, I keep on making this mistake, by the way, because every time I get one of the states selected, um, anything I change here will apply only to the state that I'm trying to change, which makes sense. But on the base state, uh, anything I change in the base state applies everywhere. For example, if which makes sense again. Uh, and it's the best way to do it. If uh, on our uh, column one, we set the spacing now between the columns to, say, 60, did you notice the change on the other states? It's changed. Look, look, change. at, look at the top here. Come look at the go. top as, as I, I'll change from zero. Look at the top, uh, all of the states there on top. And I'll change the spacing to 40 or 50. And you saw it changing on all states. So 
changes made it on the base state apply to all of the states. Um, the, the states, the, the individual states are about what is difference in relation to the base state. That's the thing that gets mapped. Okay, so where are we? Where no, were we? Sorry. Okay, no, we, now we need to actually make the things clickable and change the state as we make things clickable. So what we need, let me go to footer three. We need a mouse area. I don't know where it is, but. Here and. I place it where? In the wrong place, of course. So now, I, foot to three, we have a mouse area. Let's just go into the layout, specify the anchor field, the entire thing, just pressing there. Do the same thing for foot to two, so great. Layout. Be honest. It's, it's faster than coding, right? Even you guys feel jealous now. New mouse area didn't end up in the right position, but I can fix that. Footer one, mouse area, play here, done. So now all I need is to have some thing change, change the state while I'm in the mouse area, right? Not sure I can do that without the hover enable. Ah. This is the first time I actually need to do some code. <laughs> I was going so well. <laughs> so it is. Here are our mouse areas. So this is footer three. I should rename them, right? Now on <coughs> clicked. What's the name of our root element? Oh, there's no name, but. ID Passione. I hope there was no. Yeah, there's one. There's already one Passione. Yeah. So now it's real Passione. Okay, so yeah. all we have to do now is to say that the state changes when um, we click on the mouse area. So mouse area three. Which goes in foot one. What's wrong? Unclick. Of course. I had one one click somewhere. Ah, here it is. State. Uh, just need to know which one is it. But let's go into the designer and see. Mouse area footer three. Mouse area one is the third state, so the state is the last state, which is personages. Going mouse area door. Two, I think it's the other one, right? Let me mm. check. Apparently so. Yeah, it is. See, it, it is selected. It gives a visual hint of the one I'm working on, because it's the one selected here, and it was the one I was working on. So now it's not this one. It's this one. And the last one, it's the most easy one of them all. 
just like this. So let's see if we done everything right. Probably not. Yay! Works. So not much code, not groundbreaking stuff. Most of the things are still pretty much done in the designer tool. So I would guess designers wouldn't be completely scared about this. Yeah, and then they, oh see, they are explaining how to do this. So now I, they want me to do um, splash screen. So, and create a function to hide it. Alt F2. I think I have way too many passiones going on now. Here you are. So they want me to pay, place something in the beginning when everything starts. So this is actually a problem I have, but I guess uh, it's very common for designers or graphical designers like me to have this problem, is st a stacking problem. So they want me to put an image on top and the image again, it's that image you saw that is here somewhere, okay, image. I'll just put an image here, just drag and drop it. I'll put <coughs> it on in the bottom of this, if it allows me to. Okay, so now that my image is, has no visual, to it, but uh, they want the splash, okay? And apart from the size being declared, and it shouldn't, but I, I can do something evil, because I should go into the code and make it uh, perfect, or remove the, all of the width values, but in this case, that's what they wanted. And brings a little bit of a problem is that now, I see it all the time, it make, makes me hard to work on the stuff underneath. So temporarily, I kind of do this. I set the opacity to zero, now I can act, work on the other guys. But to do the animation they want, for, for this case, I'll just leave it there. And uh, now I need to code again a little bit. Um, so we have our image. Um, And then they, they set a timer. The timer is something that uh, my fellow developers always don't like. See all the amount of code that we've done? So far, this is it's quite big, right? And we haven't touched the thing, and it's already impressive, I think. At least I'm impressed. <laughs> um, so let's find our little guy. Where are you? I place you somewhere. This is where you find out that naming things properly <laughs> is kind of a good idea. So yeah, it, it, in the end, it becomes really natural for a designer to start using the thing a little bit more properly because it really needs to. <laughs> Because he ran in that in problems caused by himself. Like I was now searching for the for the splash, and because the the IDs were all image image image, it wasn't working. But now here it is. I can find it now. Oh, something I like to do is putting the ID here. And then I can collapse the item, and I still see the name of the element which is handy sometimes when you see lots of code and you still have an idea of the name of it. Um, so it has an opacity, okay, no, it's this one. So now they want me to use a timer function, which 
it's just a fancy thing that sets a timer and um, when it's done, it can do something. Timer. So it's just a, fun, a function. Probably can explain only explain you guys yeah, a lot I, better I how, the, how timer works. I think all people in here know what a timer is. Developer uh, designers don't. <laughs> yeah. Timer is something that you set. You you set it a specific time, and at the end of the time, it will trigger something. So there's a un untriggered uh, handler for the timer. So after a specific after the time you specify in interval, it will execute the, the JavaScript code you have on the handler. What's the name? Our splash dot opacity equals zero. Now, because I don't like it that things do it just disappear, I'll set a behavior. Something wrong here. Yeah, because you started V E V I O R. Okay. Opacity. See? See, I, I'm, I'm, it works. The two guys <laughs> working at the same time. You were doing. We, you were, we, you, we are still needed. <laughs> That's a good thing. Oh, what? See, you really need it. Opacity. Oh, control. That's what. What the? Opacity, number animation. <coughs> now it was working. I need the auto completion or I'll fail miserably. And now control. Space. Wow. Amazing. Great. Okay. So we have an animation going there that lasts 260 seconds. Sorry about that. Time here is in milliseconds. Exactly. I like this animation. Close. Okay, so almost everything done. So there's a timer. What's missing here? There's a timer, then the image itself as a function hides. Splash. I don't care about this guy. Uh, ah, see, they made a, a function and they call it here. Uh, no, that's okay. Uh, I didn't made it like that. I declared the directly, and it works just the same. I think it's even more simple to understand it like this. Uh, so all I need is to set this to start at the beginning, right? Here they go. No, the, the timer is started automatically when you. Is it? Okay. Yeah, you, in the timer, there's a running through, so it means that when the timer is created, it started counting the time. Let's see if you're right. 
You're right. Unless, we, if it didn't, we had to use like a signal like uncompleted. Uncompleted is something that you can trigger as soon as the QML is loaded. Okay, so file reload, and you can see our fade out effect that we wanted, and apparently that they wanted as well, because they asked me to do it. Questions? Wow, this went fast. So, uh, what, what do you think about the code from a developer point of view? Well, let me fix it a lot. <laughs> it's awesome, right? <laughs> Comments are <laughs> <laughs> oh, much better now. <laughs> it's properly it, it ended. See, yeah. Is it only uh, uh, well, uh, I, I wanted to ask if it's only Photoshop you can export from, or if it's. I think you can export it as well from GIMP and Illustrator. I think. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. Another question here? Is it possible to export vector graphics? Yeah, uh, I said Illustrator. <laughs> Illustrator okay. is about vector graphics. Uh, here in this example, you used only PNGs. So. Yeah, I think so. I, and I'm not sure exactly how Illustrator exports it. If it, um, let me explain it. This is a little bit more technical, but um, the images supported, because all of that magic is nothing special. It's just basically extracting all of the uh, images. And if you look at it, it's just really images, nothing special. It just abstracted the images and put it into a file and done nothing that is overly special. And the formats of images that uh, Qt, uh, QML supports is at least uh, PNGs. Uh, JPEGs and SVG. And SVG is scalable. So I would guess that uh, maybe it, uh, Illustrator does has a, a bit of basic SVG functionality installed in it. Maybe, hopefully, it will export as SVG elements and they would work. But vector and uh, being a designer, mostly a vector designer, that's what mostly I do, there's a lot of things that can go, can go wrong there because we apply a lot of after effects and filters and none of them will work. Um, I would expect them to export them as images and, and do that. Vector rendering is not that simple. It's something that sometimes developers think, oh, there's a vector, I can scale things. It, it's not that simple. It shouldn't be that simple. There's a lot of things going on in the vector that what, what we perceive as scalable is not what vectors are. Vectors are scalable in a different way, but not in the way that, that, that we expect them in user interfaces. OK. More questions? If, you, if there was loads, I, I just want to ask the, uh, the designers. The problem is that <laughs> the only designer I have there, you know this <laughs> pretty much. You, you probably use the code more than the, 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 that's the thing. After you learn this a little bit, if, if you are a designer, I had to learn myself how to do this. Just using the, uh, I was amazed, like, yeah, I can do pretty much everything on the, on the designer tool. But when I started playing with this, we end up, quickly enough starting to start uh, playing with the code because it's, it's easier and in a way it's easier to fiddle with the things. There's lots of things here that can go a little bit wrong, especially in the positioning. Uh, when I'm positioning elements, it's easy to make things go a little bit wrong and then I, go, I have to go to the code, clean it up, see how it's, uh, if, if nothing is wrong. But it's manageable, and I think it's a very good way to start you into doing QML uh, for future designers, because you can actually do uh, already very interesting uh, things and things that apparently do stuff and work in a computer, and uh, I would guess that the designer would 
be amazed. Like, like the first time when I did these things, I was, wow, I'm a coder. No, I'm not. Stuff like that. Yeah. I, I just want to go back to the developer point of view, because I'm here for that. Um, so, you know, give me this, this code. What do you have to do? Do you keep it like this? Yes, because it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't. Uh, first thing, you are going to use real ID, not colon one, image one, image two, footer one, etc., etc. Need picking. The, the designer could have be nicer, uh, nicer and, put <laughs> and put real good name in Photoshop, but that's okay. <laughs> then what what do we have? Um, we have three bot buttons at the bottom here. So immediately you think about component. I'm going to do a component for those button. So I'm going to create a button component and then uh, use it in the file. Yeah. Um, in the middle here, you have multiple items. So the designer just use some data uh, to, to see what's, what it can display. What do I need to do? Well, I don't know how many items I'm going to have, so I need to transform the, the colon into a list view. And then, who say list view? Say model and delegate. So I go, I'm going to extract the, the, the part here to create a delegate. And then I'm going to create a model to display stuff. Um, well, there's obviously an exit button here that needs to do something, so I can add it. I can extract the exit button as a component and do something. So the, the, the goal is to, to keep the QML file uh, small and readable by using components and to reuse as much as possible. Because if you keep the, the three buttons here, when, uh, when you have to change one thing on the button, you have to change on all the, the buttons. So I'm going back to the question I asked before the break. What should, do, what should we expect from designer? Well, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Evil. <laughs> no, I'm evil. That's not how I taught you. <laughs> so you, you, you have the application, but you need to refactor the code. That's what I mean. You can't keep the code as it is. OK? Yes. But don't change it. Uh, but keep, and again, with experience on this, keep the, the, the design on the loop of the things changing. Of course, of course. Um, saying, if you're going to componentize stuff, explain him, okay, I, I've just removed that a little bit into a new component, its name is this, uh, and now you can play with it, because it's not finished. And it's a great social way of saying, um, not saying the thing is say that don't expect anything from the designer, expect the things that you should expect from the designer. Yeah. And uh, the things that you should expect from the designer is the graphic, the interaction part, the, the way you interact with it, and and the, the follow-on, because uh, I would guess in this application that um, if you press one of these little arrows, something will happen. I would guess mm. that. And that means that this entire segment here should be a little bit of a component or, well, whatever, uh, a little QML file that brings more stuff happening. And that can be abstracted and sent to the, to the designer. Again, it's sending me back and now make that thing expandable and show more information and I'll send it back and we'll put it there because it, yeah. we are speaking the same language now. Yeah, when, when I'm saying that you, you shouldn't expect anything from designer, I'm, I'm just saying that you shouldn't expect designer to write the final code. The final code, you, you are the last one uh, making the, the, changing on, the changes on the code. So yeah. you, you are in charge of the code. 
But the nice thing is that I, I can create components here, and then I can give a file back to Nuno so we can change things easily. Yep, awesome, and it works. Honestly, I've, we've done this process, and it really, really works. It works uh, on all, all of the things. It, it, it works in a, when you're trying to create a basic first concept, a basic first uh, sketch up like this. And the thing that I will do now, if I have this basic concept, I will send to the client a copy of it, and the client will see it and say, yes, I'm so much going to buy it. You can actually write on the email, you are going to get exactly this. Uh, and, the, the, and then and send another copy to the developer and start uh, working on the implementation. So, great. So the things you should know. You should know why you use the export to QML from Photoshop. Well, because it, we are lazy. Uh, you know, all of these things you know, right? We could explain a little on timer, they know what timer is, what functions, we've seen, seen functions before. And the lab would be to, I think, create uh, a passage from one to the other. Not going to do the lab here. And just... Yeah, I no. um, so Do you have any question on the interaction with designer and developers, or how designer should use this. Okay, because we have 39 minutes and we are almost over. <laughs> it's a long day. <laughs> so I'm going to show again the model we started with and see now if this makes sense. Well, we've been basically doing, talking about this all day, and I would like us to discuss this and see. It's a pity there's no more more designers here, because that would have helped. PDF. So again, how we started. So, if we remember correctly, um, the beginning we talked about the design workflow, uh, and this is very typical for interaction designers and designers between themselves. It's about the technology, the appearance, the interaction, all of these things, and going through this process. Hopefully, you've seen that. Um, Layouts and prototypes, I think you, everybody see that it's totally possible to do the layouting part and the prototyping part solely in QML. And this removes out of the picture uh, two different languages that we tend to use. It's Flash and static mockups. And maybe you could all, uh, two very fundamental parts of, the, of, the, of this process use, would use the same tool. Uh, we've seen pretty much well that this involves the developer and it's a part of it and it receives something. So the, the only two parts that are kind of missing and I'm just going to do a small little demo of how you can do really basic concept sketches. But what I'm hoping for is that people on, on Qt um, would implement a set of components for wireframing. I was talking to someone the other day about just that, that it would be awesome to include into this process, really to include into this process, process the first type of designers that came in, interaction designers, so they, they could put their hands in, in QML as well and start doing the wireframes, uh, just like I was doing static, th that mock-up there. So let's, for example, start a new file or instead of starting a new file, just obliterating everything here. <coughs> so now we have a canvas. And wouldn't it be great if um, 
the user interface people would have things like a rectangle here that they call it uh, mouse area one or button and then they create, uh, they add a little X here and create just the basic wireframings, wireframes pulling elements from here, which they don't have right now, but and scale stuff, making it really easy. Because then these guys could end up on my lap and I could see exactly what the user interface uh, guys are trying to explain me because I can see it, it's there, it's, there's a rectangle, there's text there and hopefully they will name it better and I will replace the, all of those elements that they've created with imagery and things and create the mockup uh, that you've just seen with the, with the same basic, on top of the same basic uh, structure that the first guys did and send that to the to my colleagues and they will send it back and if you, for example I was just discussing uh, this with her that is a interaction designer maybe sometimes um, it's not the skill it's it's different skill sets maybe uh, an element that I created is great and that the 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 uh, motion designer likes and and it's all great and looks fantastic. It's hard to grasp from the user and something is wrong there. And then we pass this element to, to the interface uh, person that will look at it and see, well, the mental model there is kind of wrong. Why don't you do it like that? And simply changes a little bit the code. And because everybody is speaking the same language, and I'm repeating it myself a lot on this, um, uh, it's easy to pass along. Yes? Thanks. My comment here is that uh, at least in my company we would first have the UI designer design the UI and the interaction and all of that before we touch the code or before I hand over the task to the graphic designer because then we don't have to redo the code and redo the great looking graphics that the graphic designer has already created. So yes. Just correcting. Uh, uh, no, that, that's that's yeah. a mostly the traditional flow. But sometimes, wouldn't it be nice to have it more um, easy to make it more easy to? Yes. So if, if, for example, the interaction designer was involved in the very beginning and had access to the, all this stuff, and like you said, then somebody came in and replaced the elements, then it would be awesome. So I, I'm totally getting. Uh, the, what I'm trying idea. to say. Yes. I'm, I'm just afraid that what's going to happen is that somebody's going to write the code and do the graphics and then you ask the UX designer. Okay, well, things that yeah. never ever, right? <laughs> <laughs> it never and that happens way too often. Yeah, they yeah. never ask you for validation of their own ideas, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so this is the idea, is that, that um, with QMA and QuickBake, uh, we'll be able to um, create a flow rather than create uh, a static points of entry of different people that do their thing and pass the work to another person. If you go to a slide, or the flow. Flow? Oh, the one, the last one, yes. Um, yeah, because this module here is all about, in the, in the proper training, is really hands-on, hopefully with a, lot few, with a lot less people, and we, in the, in the, in the training, will try to do this, really this, see if the model works with our ends on the, on the code and on the specific problems and try to work out some kind of solution. Because for example, for example this, the, the module here and um, the um, lab is really interesting. This image basically is the image that completes the thing and shows you a different, kind of a different uh, perspective on, on a project where, where we have uh, a team, a whole team that involves several different people and that first start with an initial uh, discussion. But the interaction, the graphic, the motion and the developer all work at all stages of the application from point one to point 
zero to to end application, and then even do review and stuff, and everybody's talking the same language, so it's great. So that's mostly it for for this training. Um, if you have any question, uh, we will be happy to answer. Uh, we will be around uh, during dinner or tomorrow. And the next day. And the next day. Uh, also, Nuno is um, going to do um, UX clinic. Yes. Is that uh, it? UI UX clinic. If you want to fix your app, don't ask me how, but I can <laughs> help you if I can. Uh, so, so if you have uh, like applications that need well just a different side a different look at it like how can I do it this better I might be able to say a few random idiotic ideas about it maybe it's a good idea maybe it's not you guys be the judge of it so questions, questions? please no no questions. Wow. Okay. Yes. Oh, there's one. Your clinic is for uh, only for a mobile application or no, also no, for no, desktop? No. Uh? no, everything. The okay. uh, uh, desktop, mobile, touch, mm. uh, embedded, whatever. I've, web. I've done what? Web. No, no <laughs> just not web because I hate the web. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, we will see you around, and uh, just ask, and just come and ask us anything, or pay a beer, or whatever. Yes, we like beers. Thank you.